there's no doubt the markets are short term overbought. Um, and, you know, if you look at technicals, the move we've had, particularly this parabolic move in the last month of August, um, is quite incredible and the best August, I think, since 2000. However, if you look at underlying what's driving the market, what we've consistently been saying is the liquidity from the Fed, and you've been hearing this, you know, from a number of people, um, is putting a floor under the market. We've had the anchoring of short-term rates in the last week um, in the States, and this all drives the multiple. I mean, ultimately, you've got the multiple in the earnings. The multiple is very well supported. The S&P forward earnings has gone from 16 to 22 times. We got to 25 times at the peak um, in you know, the dot-com era. But now, where we are in terms of the cycle, this is the time for the earnings to come through. So, you know, you could argue that, particularly for some of these recovery stocks, the multiple is artificially high. And, you know, as we get, you know, lift, um, things start to reopen, uh, we'll see further participation in the market. So, so far, what everybody's worried about is this small group of technology stocks, particularly the FANGs, um, that have driven driven the market. But if we get broader participation, um, as we were starting to see with companies like Royal Caribbean or Carnival in, in August, that can you know move things high, higher over the medium term. So we remain positive. Just to pick up on the other side of that, I mean, obviously there are the potential beneficiaries from the recovery that um, perhaps look uh, suppressed in valuation terms compared to the stay-at-home peers. But given where you think we are in this cycle, do the stay-at-home stocks still deserve their premium? Very good question. Clearly, they are the companies, um, and you see the themes that we invest in. We invest in eight themes, um, and two or three of them have benefited disproportionately from exactly what you're saying, which are the explosion of data and platform companies. And it's particularly the latter, the platform companies, which have been getting the headlines. They are seeing accelerating earnings. There's no doubt about that. And given we've got that floor on rates, which drive you know your discount rate and your valuation, people are prepared to pay bigger premiums for that. So yes, you know they undoubtedly do deserve a premium because the kind of trends we saw coming into this and we talked about a technological revolution have just accelerated take one example paypal which we own we don't own any of the fangs and we don't own apple but if you take paypal they've seen a three-year acceleration at the tam the total addressable market in the last three months you've got people like my parents 70 year old doctors in wales doing their grocery shopping online for the first time it's a new market for paypal so these are real trends that are accelerating. 